G'day guys, welcome to this episode of Pete vs Plants. I am Pete, the plants are behind me and today I think we are going to give the chop to my Monstera Mint over here. Probably can't see because it it's blown out, but this, this one, is, <laughs> I'm pointing at the wrong one. I'm getting, I'm getting so confused. All right, so this is the mint over here and it's gotten quite big. I have kind of, I don't know if you'd call this air layering, but I've chucked another pot with soil behind it over a node. Um, it's pushed out a, a leaf recently, which has, I think it's almost hardened off completely. And so I think it's ready for a chop. I think this is gonna be incredibly root bound. You're gonna see, um, let's just get into it. I might have to <laughs> give you a view. I might have to give you an angled view like this to be able to actually fit the entire plant in the shot. Although I don't even think that's gonna be able to handle it because it is quite a beast. And it's a bit of an awkward one. All right, I will grab her out. So I watered this guy, this girl, this plant yesterday to make sure that he, she, it was fully hydrated prior to the chop. But I'll give you a look at the most recent leaf as it is an absolute stunner. I'm not sure if you can see the variegation there, but I am so in love with this plant, so I am sort of a bit bummed out to chop it, but at the same time, I need to make my money back <laughs> and sell some of these, these cuttings. But yeah, it is an absolute beast. So from what I understand, this is a Monstera Deliciosa. It's a large form, so you'll be able to see the ripples up the back here. And um, yeah, the leaves have sized up pretty quickly, as you can see. And it is a platinum mint, I've been told. If I get close here, you can probably see this minty variegation and it's really consistent across all of the leaves. So it just looks stunning. I absolutely love it. It's not the most, the most minty of the ones that I've seen, but yeah, I ended the story. The story behind this girl is that I got her on, I think it was Facebook Marketplace. Someone put them up, put it up saying they found it at Bunnings and wanted to sell it and I think I got it for 170 bucks and it would have originally been I think it's pushed out three leaves since I got it so I'm gonna have to go backwards so that you can see guys <laughs> sorry okay so the most recent one is this beast here and then before that it was this one and you can see it sort of darkens off a little bit as, it, as the leaves harden off and when I got it I think it had only just started to push out this leaf back here. So originally it was this one, this one, and everything else uh, down below. The interesting thing is it hasn't, from what I can see, it hasn't been chopped before, but you'll see all of these growth points down below here. There's at least one, two, three, four, five growth points have all activated. So the plan today is probably to unpot this, this girl, and I definitely want to take the top off which was sort of the whole point of, of this section up here. And I can feel it is really tight. So I have a feeling once we open it up, there are gonna be roots all over the shop in there, at least I'm hoping. And you can see an aerial root is busting out of the top here. And there was also another aerial root busting out uh, down here, but I put a pin over the top of it and pushed it back down into the soil. The, <laughs> the pot has um, roots coming out of the bottom and the is it convex? The bottom is actually convex, so it doesn't, it sort of doesn't sit properly. It rocks like this. And it's also just solid as a rock. So I am really expecting this to be really, really, really root bound um, when we pull it off. Oh, I have just noticed it has been cut before. What was I thinking? So yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so the plan is to potentially to at least chop the top off. I'm not sure if I'll sell that or I'll keep that. I'll probably I want to keep it because I want a beautiful mint feature plant in my collection that's pretty big. But I also know that it's probably the best cutting to sell if I wanted to sell it. And I have no idea on price, to be honest. Um, I know that I got this for a steal. I got this for a very good price in Australia. I've seen, there was a guy recently who bought one of these in Perth that had, it, I think it was probably a platinum mint. It was definitely a mint variegation um, Monstera large form. I think he ended up buying it for $2,000 from an old couple and it was huge. It was a really big plant. They'd had it for decades. 
And he, I remember speaking to him and was like, you got that for an amazing deal, dude. And then within a month, I saw him up on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace trying to sell each leaf for $2,000. Insane. Um, the variegation was probably more striking than the variegation that this plant has. In fact, it was more, much more striking, but I wasn't a massive fan of it. It was kind of a bit ugly. It was where, I'll see if I can find some photos and chuck it up on screen here, but it just didn't, I don't know, it had this look about it I'm not really a massive fan of. I'll, I'll show you the photos so you can see what I mean, but it was kind of like this inconsistent white, brighter white mintiness, but it kind of had a bit of a sickly look about it. Anyway, I was sort of astonished that the leaves were getting sold for that much. Um, and I say sold because most, if not all of them, except for one, I think when I spoke to him had gone, had been sold. And I was just like, fuck me. <laughs> so this guy bought this plant with, you know, probably 10 or more leaves on it. And he was selling them all for $2,000 a piece. So he made probably, if he sold the entire plant off and he bought it for two grand, that's, and there were 10 leaves, that's, you know, 10 xing his investment. So anyway, long story short, I don't know what to price this at. I think I might auction it if I chuck it up on eBay. The other thing is too, I'm kind of nervous about sending large plant, large leaves in the mail because I've bought a few in the past and I've kind of been a little heartbroken when they arrive and have a bit of damage. I bought one time on stair that I have over here um, by the window and an entire leaf had actually snapped off it when it arrived and I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. Anyway, we're taking forever here, we're ranting. I'm just gonna pull this girl out and I think, yeah. So what was I saying before about propagation? I think I'll take the top off. There's at least one, two, three other leaves that I could potentially separate out and turn into individual plants or um, at least cuttings. Each one of these has got a large aerial root that has, has gone into the soil and has rooted. And then I'll have this base plant, which originally I was thinking perhaps I just leave it in the pot, but because the pot's so root bound, it's probably not got a lot of nutrients in here. The soil is probably nursery soil as well. I haven't changed it since I got it because again, I was just wanting it to grow. I didn't want it to uh, stagnate in its growth and sort of be shocked if I transplanted it immediately. Um, and it does seem to have been growing like crazy despite being uh, root bound, but it dries out every two or three days. So yeah, there's plenty of options here. I think we'll just take it out, have a look at the roots, get rid of the soil, and then try and work out what the best course of action will be. So. Yeah, I might change the angle, guys. So you can watch me from here, but you can see why I wanted to, to show, <laughs> show you from an angle because it's a bit hard for me to get this whole plant into camera. But that new leaf, like, again, I'll try and get one more shot before I do any, any choppage. But just how nice is that? It's just a stunner. Oh man, it kills me. It kills me every time I um, go up and inspect this leaf because I just, yeah, I'm such a sucker for mint variegation, uh, especially this kind of consistent mint variegation across the entire leaves. The patchiness, the blockiness, I don't mind, but when it's kind of consistent like this, mm, I just, it just, I don't know, does something to me, guys. It makes me tingly inside. <laughs> Make of that what you will. All right, uh, don't, don't watch this. I'm, I'm thinking to my wife, don't watch this, you'll, uh, you'll leave me. Okay, so I guess first we'll take off the glad wrap at the top here. And I'll show you once I take this off and the, <laughs> I can't really just let the plant do its thing. Um, once I take this off, I'll show you what I actually did to the pot to make it kind of work here. Jesus, this, I really do need another person here. All right. Come off gently. Wow, okay, yeah, this is incredibly root bound and the roots have all grown upwards towards the surface from what I can see here. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a squish and try and pull it down off the plant without doing any damage. I could potentially just cut the pot away, but I would like to reuse it to be honest. Ooh, okay, perfect. Whoa, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Look at that, wow. <laughs> Look at the size of the roots at the back there, guys. Oh my God, I wasn't expecting it to have worked that well. Okay, so I guess the story here is that um, probably, it'd be about two months ago, I decided that uh, it would have been, 
It would have been the, this leaf had just come out and there was a, a root coming off the node here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's just there coming off this node. So it would have either been this leaf or this um, second last leaf here had come out and that aerial root was starting to poke its head out. And I was like, it's hanging over the edge of the, um, the pot here. So I need to capture that so that I can propagate this in the future. So I decided to try a pot and soil method where I just sort of cut a bunch of the plastic out of the back here and uh, kind of made a wedge shape at the bottom there so that I could actually fit this entire thing around the uh, stem of the plant. So not just to go over the bottom of the root, but to go over the entire stem of the plant. And then I had used um, this and some glad wrap to just kind of keep it together. And I just watered it anytime I watered the plant, really. I've used my extra chunky aeroid mix here. You can see, you know, there's these large chunks of orchid bark and large perlite and everything. And yeah, it was well draining, so I didn't really have to worry too much about overwatering it or anything. But the whole reason was to try and get th literally this, and this is almost pot bound. Like if you look on the other side here, that's it's sort of running out of space. You can see a lot of these roots are growing up towards the surface here. So I do really think that it's definitely been time to um to chop it up and to chuck it in another pot. Now the only thing I'm sort of considering here is to potentially remove the top part first. Um, before getting into the bottom section and, and removing all the soil. And I'm just thinking about if I do chop her up, I don't know where my, um, I don't know where I've put my, why am I having such a brain fart? My activated charcoal. I don't know where I put that. I, that would have been good if I'd actually had that so that I could sort of, um, it's not cauterize, but put it over the, the wound that I open up when I cut the plant because I don't really want it to get soil in it and for it to rot. <sighs> Maybe I just cut it and let it sit out for a bit. Yeah, and I've got to work out how the hell am I going to get this thing to stand up whilst I go and get a knife because I'm going to need a large knife. All right, I guess I will use this. <laughs> Have I got a pot or something? Oh, I know. I can hopefully use these guys. See if I can find the right height. Should do. Don't break the roots. Please don't break the roots. Okay, that looks like it's gonna sit there. Um, I'm gonna go grab a knife. Kitchen knife. And I might just disinfect it quickly, although it should be okay. So I'm just using some um, antibacterial disinfectant here. Um, I will, though, use a paper towel to just dry this off. So I probably just put introduced bacteria back onto it. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll just take all three of those top leaves. I could probably separate it out because I do think that there are two roots coming out of, of the um, three leaves here, the two nodes, I guess. But I think I'd rather a more solid kind of root ball for the lot. Um, so that hopefully it just keeps growing as is and doesn't get a reduction in, um, in leaf size. Yeah, oh man, I'm so nervous, guys. All right. Um, I guess I'll try and go halfway down this node. Because it is a large form, it is kind of tight with internodal spacing. And so I found, too, that the seesaw motion for cutting through these tends to be the easiest way to do it. As you can see, it was pretty quick. And very, very, very clean. So what should I do here? I won't, I guess I'll just give it a bit of a shake. Try and get the bit of the excess soil off. And I'm trying to think about what I could put this in to kind of just let it do its thing for a bit. Maybe a pot like this. I'll rest, rest it in like that. Hmm. God, it makes me so nervous. I really want this thing to do well, but I'm probably overthinking it. Hmm. Maybe I just lie it down. I might get some paper towel, put it on the ground, and then just lie this girl down gently on the ground. Otherwise, what are my options? I could put it on a chair. I could do this, I guess. Okay, can we sit her gently on the chair? All right. There we go. That might be the go, all right? So I'm just gonna leave her 
to callus over here for maybe, I don't know, half an hour or so. I'll have to have a, a coffee break. Um, hmm. Now the other option that I had with this was to potentially repot the entire thing um, and then chop up the nodes and just leave that in the pot and wait for those to activate and then later completely separate everything out. So that was one option as opposed to say, dividing up the entire plant and taking up a shitload of space with, you know, say two or three other propagations as well as the main bottom of the plant. But yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure. So many options, huh guys? <sighs> oh man, so many options. I really should have thought this out a little bit before. You know what? I'm gonna have a quick look and see if I can find my activated charcoal. And if I can, I think that's gonna make life a lot easier for just rubbing it over the edges and just going bang, 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 bang. <clears throat> Where would you be? Found ya! <laughs> gotcha, you son of a bitch! All right. Guess we are cooking with gas, guys. We're cooking with gas. It's one of those things I'm like, I know I've seen you around here somewhere, but my issue was that we've just moved house in the last month and I still have a shitload of boxes that I have to unbox. And it was in one of those. Okay, so I'm just kind of painting my fingers <laughs> as, as so, or as like so. And I am just gonna rub it onto the end like that. That's about all there is to it. And I guess I will do it over here as well, and I'm gonna just tip out a bit so I don't keep contaminating it. And, oh man, it's gonna dirty the floor up. Oh well, it's what we do for our plants, right? So I do this, I'm just doing this off camera, sorry guys. I do this because I've seen Sean from Only Plants doing it, and it seems to have worked so far. I'm not sure what the um, science is behind it. I assume that charcoal is obviously inert and maybe not uh, a great medium for things to grow in, so, yeah, gets rid of all the impurities and toxins and stuff if you um, if you chuck it on things. So I assume that's part of it. It's just a little barrier here over whatever it is that you end up chopping up and protects it from rot. Okay, let's get the charcoal out of the way. I found that on, I think I got that on eBay, maybe. Maybe it was eBay, maybe it was Amazon, but yeah, activated charcoal. And it's good just because it's a really, really fine powder, as you can see, and it pretty much stays on your hands for days. Okay, so I still haven't worked out what I'm gonna do here. I think we'll just take out the entire plant and have a look at what's going on underneath the hood. Because, yeah, I'm curious. We're gonna have to take this soil out anyway because I'm sure that it has been completely, what would you say, um, sucked dry of any interesting, decent nutrients for the plant. Um, here is, I'm not sure if you can see, but here is that root. No, it's going to be too hard. Maybe if I do it sideways with the leaf behind the camera. There's the root and there's the pin that I was using to hold that aerial root down because I wanted it to go back into the soil so that it would um, hopefully send out some secondary roots. So I guess I'll just leave it as is. Uh, also, I use these plastic cups that my wife always gets with her smoothies when she buys those and I chop them in half and take the bottom off and I often put them behind where aerial roots are coming out of the plant to guide them back into the soil. So you can probably see here, there were a bunch of aerial roots coming out of the plant and so I wanted it to stay inside the pot. So I set this up and I used skewers to kind of support it because the roots coming out were actually really thick and quite strong and were pushing the, the plastic. Oh my God. Anyway, so, it's so funny, I can feel the roots separating from the side of the pot and it's actually quite warped. The top here, I can feel it. It's kind of got bulges all over the shop. So I have a feeling when we pull this out, you're gonna see roots flush, that were flush up against the pot all over the place. All right. Um, what's the easiest way to do this? Oh. <laughs> God, squeeze the bottom a bit. Again, I don't, I don't want to damage the plant, so I've got to be ultra careful with how I take it out. Uh, okay. 
Oh, come on. How am I going to do this easily without damaging the thing? Maybe I do it over the edge of the table. Like so. I guess I can pour a bunch of this soil off. Ah, oh, come on. I don't think there's going to be a way of doing this without making a really big mess. Sorry, Cal. <laughs> I'll vacuum afterwards. <laughs> oh. God damn. Ah, oh, it's so stuck in there. I really need another person to be pulling on this while I pull. Oh, there we go. <laughs> what do you reckon, guys? <laughs> you think she's root bound? <laughs> oh my God. Good God, that's even more than I was expecting. Jesus Christ. Wow, okay. What do you reckon, guys? Was it time to um, up pot this girl? <laughs> So, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry, darling. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You really, really did need a new home sooner, didn't you? Uh, oh, whoops, that was the charcoal that I was gonna use. Um, <laughs> far out. Yeah, Jesus, I, I guess we will try and separate out some of the soil from you, just so that we can um, pot you up again with as little of this shitty soil as possible. But yeah, you've got such nice roots. I really don't want to damage any of them, even though they are absolutely massive. So look at that too. This is ridiculous, guys. I don't know how I'm gonna, if you have advice for like what to do here with, you know, taking the soil out of these sorts of root balls without, you know, with doing the, the least amount of damage possible, definitely let me know in a comment below. Um, as yeah, this is sort of my first foray into a really, really, really root bound Monstera. And it's, yeah, I've used a lot of moss at the back here to sort of hold the moisture in around where those aerial roots were coming in. And the, the roots have actually grown up from the soil and into that moss. <sighs> I, th I guess it's just gonna be slow going, huh guys? It's probably not really gonna be any, um, anything else to it besides taking your time. I always wonder too where the soil goes you know, you kind of think when they potted this up, there would have been a bit of a root ball, but the majority of it would have been obviously soil. And now you would imagine that the majority of the mass would be uh, roots. So I don't know if like most of the, all the plant sucking the nutrients and everything out of the soil just keeps reducing its, its mass continually. You know, I guess that's the only real thing that could be happening. But yeah, and you'll see this really helped. So by putting this root back down into the soil, it's continued to grow along the bottom here and is, is heading down, but you can see why it came up. It's actually, wow, it's actually the root from the back here. It's come down, it's found nowhere to go down because it's been blocked by everything else. And so it's literally gone around the surface. Is that connected to it? Yeah, wow, okay, so it has sent some roots down, but it's that tap root, that main aerial root, I guess, before it's you know, created secondary roots has just sort of continued along the surface going around and around because it was so root bound. Far out, okay. Um, I guess, hmm, I guess we will just try and chop this up into multiple plants and uh, pot them up separately to give them the best chance possible because I think if I just put this into another pot, it's, it's, yeah, it's gonna, it's just gonna be ridiculous. Um, God, maybe I just don't have to worry too much about being ultra gentle. Or maybe I try and separate out one cutting at a time in terms of the roots. And um, yeah, I just really don't like breaking roots. <laughs> I don't think anyone does, right? This is gonna take forever. Come on, come apart. Jesus, this is so ridiculous, guys. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to separate out this, this next node and the root, this main root, this large area root below it and keeping as many of the secondary roots that it shot out of this main root as possible because I know when I pot it up, I want it to have as intact a root um, structure as possible to just hit the ground running, hopefully, so that it just keeps growing and activates that node. Man, I just absolutely love Monstera roots too. What do you guys reckon? Are you a fan? 
All right, there we go. So we've separated that one out. I think what I'm gonna do is just chop chop. Caution to the wind, guys. So just making sure the node, oh, sorry, the node, the um, auxiliary bud for these guys should be on the inside of where the leaf is coming away from the plant. On some plants, you'll see it on the other side, but on uh, Monsteras, typically it's behind where the leaf comes out. So again, you can just sort of clear away some of the dust here to double check, but it should be, oh, there it is. Okay, there you go. It's right there. Hopefully you can see that under my finger. So obviously you wanna know where that is so that when you make a cut, I'm gonna do that seesawing action, you end up with both um, a leaf and a, an auxiliary bud to activate. Now, as I'm going through here, I am trying to be hyper aware of the fact that the aerial root is, is going to be below, obviously where the knife comes out and I don't want the knife to just suddenly flick out and chop that root. Done that before, and that sucks. Okay, so here is this cutting. Boom, looks good. Really nice healthy root, and there is the leaf. And I'm expecting this variegation to be incredibly stable. I don't think it's, it's gonna be the, the kind that reverts again. No expert, but from what I've seen on this plant where it just seems to be consistent across every single leaf, I haven't seen it sort of, you know, fluctuating at all. I think it is gonna be fine. So I'm just gonna chuck some of this charcoal over this area that I've just cut to make sure it's cauterized. Cauterized, you know what I mean. I'm not gonna burn it. And I'm gonna remove some of this sheath and put it aside, I guess. I'll put it over here for now. Because <clears throat> what I'm thinking too is not to forget to take photos of the roots before I pop them up because I don't want to have to unpot them to show the roots if I decide, well, when I decide to sell them. Okay, so do I do another one? I reckon I do another one or two guys. Although if I take it, if I take both these leaves off and just leave it with these little tiddlers, it will activate, I think these, it'll reactivate a lot of these nodes, but it's gonna take forever to start pushing out growth because it will have its surface area of uh, chlorophyll because you won't have these large leaves dramatically reduced. So I might just take this one off if I can work out where that root is and then separate it out from everything else because that's gonna be the tricky part. Man, I am so tempted to just sort of pot this back up as is. Although I would really like to get some fresh soil into, you know, into the, uh, the root mass here. Maybe I come from, Maybe I come from below. That might be the easiest thing, right? To really try it. But you just look at that. Look how blocked up it is. Again, I just, I'm so nervous about doing any damage to these luscious, large roots. I really don't want to snap any off because I think the plant, this is why the plant's been growing so voraciously. It's been pushing out a leaf every, uh, probably one a month at least, but it usually pushes one out and it's already got another one coming out before it's even hardened off the next, the next leaf. Wow, okay. Man, this is just really hard to get into. I'm trying to think, do I, because these roots have come, they've gone down and then they've come back up around the sides and so I'm sort of trying to peel them away. You'll see this one comes right back from the bottom, back from the top all the way to the bottom. Okay, and I'm trying to follow this area root that's come down from the next node here and find it down the bottom here. So it has grown down to the bottom. Here we go, sweet. It's actually quite impressive how much the aerial roots haven't actually turned into a significant amount of root mass. So the, the bulk is really just the last, or the, the very, very bottom few nodes of the plant that has just shot out all of these roots. And I guess it's had the most amount of time to grow, so that's what you would expect, but, and, and space. <laughs> Is that too. Okay, I think we've kind of cleared this one away. I'm just making, okay, broke one there. Such is life. I don't know how you would ever do this without making, breaking any roots. Feels like there needs to be an expression, right guys? You know, in order to propagate, you need to break a few roots. It's like uh, that break a few eggs saying, all right, you're gonna come apart. There's something really satisfying too about pulling two roots apart from one another. Like when you've got them growing like this beside one another and you can just go, <laughs> there's something that's sort of oddly satisfying about that. 
Okay, I think uh, there's some roots that are sort of going into the center. Oh, there we go. Let me get you out. Yeah. Come out. Boom, don't break. I'm actually kind of impressed at how bendy these guys are. Like the, I haven't snapped any of the large roots yet. Knock on wood. Knock on Monstera. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna chop this one. So that's pretty good. We've turned one plant into four plants. Uh, might just give it another wipe. And I am gonna try and make sure that I don't cut through the axillary bud on this side. Okay, seesaw through, gently, gently. As you get to about halfway, sort of slowing down a bit with pressure and with pace. There we go, oof, nice. And then gently separate the plant out. Oh, so that's got quite a nice root system. Again, what you would expect, right? It's been in there longer than the other cuttings and so you would expect it to be a little more advanced. Okay, I'm just gonna pour out a bit more charcoal for myself and charcoal up this side of it. And I'm gonna get that on my pants as well. So that's what's happening there. And I'm gonna charcoal this side of it up too. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna put this guy aside. And I don't know how much more sort of fiddling to do with this guy. Like, sorry about the angle guys, I'm covering up my face. I know why you come. I know why you come here, just to see me, not the plants, right? Um, okay, so I really wanna get, <laughs> I wanna get up the clucker of this plant and see if I can pull some of these um, roots apart from the bottom so I can get the soil out from the middle. But to be honest guys, it's just so dense. I think this entire thing is just gonna be soil. So uh, maybe I can go from the top down. <laughs> this is probably the only place that a little bit of soil is left. The other thing I could do, and I, I don't have much experience with this, is root pruning. So you guys will need to let me know, is this a situation where you could probably actually cut quite a bit of this root mass away because it's um, not required for the small amount of plant that is now above? Or is it the kind of thing where you just, no, 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 don't do that, leave it as is. Um, you know, it's, it's just gonna slow the plant down, it'll shock it, and you want the plant to have as much in the way of a, uh, a root ball as possible to just get growing again and just really, you know, hit the ground running after, after transplant. Okay, I think I found my technique, the little fingery fingery. <laughs> That wasn't meant to be seedy. Get your mind out of the gutters, guys. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I'm such a bad human being. I was gonna say, don't, don't judge me on technique. <laughs> oh God, keep it G-rated, Peter. Jesus. There's children watching. <laughs> All those kids out there that are obsessed with Monsteras, you know, that'll be the next big movement. They'll stop playing video games and they'll all get into indoor plants. If only, right mums <laughs> and dads? Oh man, <sighs> keep this sh show going, it's getting derailed. I don't know how much to really keep trying to dig into this, guys. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Maybe we just get a bit more brutal with it. The big roots will survive. The other thing is I guess I could put this under water. You could give it a hose down, <laughs> you could use some warm water and um, that'll help get some of this soil out and probably separate the roots too. We are gonna be here a while, I was not expecting it to turn into this kind of long video guys. So I don't know, let me know if you enjoy these longer ones because I kind of feel the pressure at times to um, try and shorten these down. But I know that at least in this kind of genre of YouTube video, a lot of the time length doesn't really matter because we kind of watch these whilst chilling out and doing our own plant chores and everything. So yeah, give me some feedback on video length. If you're enjoying longer videos from me, then I will probably feel less pressure to kind of obviously chop them down and keep them short and sweet. But if you want longer, yeah, if you want longer ones, let me know so that, yeah, well, <laughs> I guess I've said why. All right, I think, I think I'm just gonna call it quits soon, guys. And I don't know whether or not to upsize it. Probably should, probably should. I have to go and explore and see if I can find, I think this is a 20 centimeter pot, so I'll see if I can find the next size up. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna do. I've tried to sort of remove a bunch of the soil on the inside, but it does feel like it's just small roots and I'm destroying a whole bunch of them as I do so. So, all right, I'm gonna go find a bigger pot and I'll be back in a sec. God, there's so much soil on the floor. Ah, <sighs> pot, 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 pots.
Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to make some soil up too. Okay, there's the pot. I think this will do. This looks like it's maybe 30 centimeters. Um, I'm gonna have to make some soil, so bear with me. I'll be back shortly. Well, instantaneously for you guys. Okay, so I'm an idiot who decided to take my jumper off and forgot the fact that the microphone was attached to the jumper and not my shirt. So for the next few minutes, effectively all I did was pot up the base plant of the Monstera here and then I was talking about how I was interested to see what's going to happen with the different nodes on this plant because I think the majority of them, if not all of them, have activated uh, and so I don't know whether or not just the primary one is going to continue to grow or if they're all going to take off further and it's going to turn into a plant that has many different uh, growth points on it. So anyway, now we'll get into the potting up of the rest of the cuttings. It's funny, I almost always forget to take the mic off my uh, jumper when I take my jumper off. So I'll sit down and be ready to film and I'll be like, wait a second. Okay, um, so I think I'm going to try and fit these guys into some of these are they 14 centimeter pots, clear ones. I'm not sure what will happen when and if I sell them. I assume I'll need to take them out and put them in moss and then send them in the mail. Or I could send them in soil in these pots, but they'll be a little bit heavy, so they may increase the fee for postage. Um, okay, so I guess we'll start with these two and I have photographed them. So I'll show you the photos that I took. The standard thing, I always thought, why do people always seem to have one arm in? But then I realized they're doing this, right? Trying to take it themselves. So, okay, soil at the bottom. I'm gonna, I guess we can try and do this up on the table, but it's gonna be kind of a bit of a pain in the butt because the, the rim of this bucket is so tall. Okay, bit of soil at the bottom. And I guess we'll start with you. I don't know, we're gonna have to sort of work these around gently, guys. So I found, I think, the way that you can do this best is to usually chuck everything in and then kind of twist to get things down. Hopefully to sort of about <laughs> where the node is at the level of the top of the pot. And then just gently coax everything down. I need, you know what, one of you guys said the other day, you should use a shovel, that might help you with potting up. That's a good idea! And I have one here, so I should stop being lazy. Or rather be more efficient. Okay. So, I can't wait to see these guys pop. The other thing that I'm not sure about with selling these guys is whether or not to sell them before they've popped. As someone who has bought quite a few cuttings, online, I do really appreciate when you get one and the growth point has already taken off because you're not sitting there waiting for months and months and months for it to activate because sometimes, well, every single time effectively, you take a cutting like this, it does take a long time for the uh, growth point to activate and it's, it can be a bit of a bummer if you spend all this money on one of these sort of plants and you're like, I can't wait to see it go off and it takes like three months to activate and then start growing and you're like, I've just realized I need something to stake these guys up too. So I'm gonna go and sort that out. One tickamaroo, guys. One tickamaroo. Bamboo stakes. Where the fuck have I put bamboo stakes? They're fucking hiding here. <laughs> I found you. Oakley dokely. Try and wedge this guy in thin in first gently as I can without breaking any roots. Give it a twisty twist all the way down. And um, line her up. I guess we can do it right in the cusp. And I've got some tape here that I can reuse. Isn't that great? Just right on hand. There we go, boom. Wham bam, thank you ma'am. Sweet, okay, so the only thing I may try and do is secure this a little better at the bottom here, although I am probably gonna take it out of this pot anyway, assuming I sell it. So, get some soil in there behind that. This is definitely a perlite heavy mix. All right, so there we go. Number one, looking good. She is looking fresh, reaching for the sun. Put her out of the way and we'll get on to number two here. 
And yeah, I am at a total loss as to what to do with pricing these guys, which is what makes me want to auction them. And that can be something I could do. Like, there are some sort of different methods people use when selling stuff in the groups I've noticed on Facebook. Or they probably do it on eBay and, and you know, Marketplace or whatever else. Uh, not Marketplace, what am I talking about? Gumtree. And that is usually they'll put some really exorbitant price on something that they don't know the value of. And if it doesn't go straight away, they'll often then either reduce the price, obviously, or they'll try and auction it um, and see what it goes for. And so it can be a good idea sometimes, guys, to not jump straight on it if you see it up for some ridiculous amount of money. Like a good example is I saw someone put up recently a variegated golden dragon for 9,000 Australian dollars in, um, I was about to use my hand, in one of the groups and was just thinking, where did you pull that from? Like, you literally just pulled that number out of your ass. You know, oh yeah, it's worth nine grand. And you're like, based on what? When was the last time you saw one of them being sold and how much did it go for? But I guess that's the hard part, right? You know, to, to play devil's advocate, a lot of these plants are one of a kind, especially when you find these random variegated, I don't know, uh, Alocasia cuprias or uh, some plant that's, you know, it's, it's not very common to find it variegated at all. And so quite often at the start, because of the hype and because of collectors, like the upper echelon of collectors, um, the prices can be absolutely ridiculous. Let me just pull this apart whilst holding this in place. I don't want it to break the root off. Okay, again, I am just gonna fasten this to the pole. Give it a few taparoonies to make sure that the soil is sunk down into all the air holes that are potentially down there. Using my hand again, I don't have to get out of that habit. Breaking the habit tonight. Man, I miss um, I miss Lincoln Park. Tell you what, guys, that broke my heart when um, Chester committed suicide. Uh, all right. So there we go, number two, there is the growth point looking good, the root system's really good, the leaf's looking good. The only thing with these two is that if I were to purchase these based on the soil mix that is in here, assuming that they come with the soil mix that is in there, these are gonna have to be watered quite frequently because they are very, very high draining, high perlite mixes. This is the kind of mix that I would assume, especially with these thick, chunky roots, you're gonna have to water probably every two days. So you may wanna make it a little denser if you're a bit I don't know, not keen to do that kind of a watering regime, but it doesn't bother me. I prefer to be watering more often because the plant's drying out in a well-draining mix than less frequently in a denser mix that I'm sort of like, Ugh, you know, it doesn't need it, does it not need it? All right, now this is the only one that sort of makes me nervous, although it should be fine. And it's because the, the part that we chopped is at the bottom and I'm probably gonna sink it below the surface of the soil. It has been sitting out now for probably 45 minutes and it does have charcoal on it, so it should be okay. The other option would be to do it horizontally like this, but if I keep this plant, I don't want it growing horizontally, I want it growing up. And I think also, I don't sort of wanna encourage the root system to go down like this if I'm gonna post it. So I think I'm just gonna do this. The other thing to note here is that it does have mesh at the bottom here. And annoyingly, the roots have grown through the mesh. So uh, I'm not sure whether or not to just leave that in there. It's probably a bit dodgy to do that. So I might just try and gently coax, coax it out and just break a few tips, unfortunately. You probably could get in here with scissors. <laughs> <coughs> Went in my eye and my nose and try and cut around the roots. But I think you would be here for quite a bit of time especially with this one, because there seems to be quite a lot of these roots that have grown through. So it might just have to be that there are a few casualties. Yeah, sorry guys, a few of those tips came off. Um, the soil is pretty fresh, but I can probably just, yeah, give it a few taps here and get most of it out. Um, I don't think I'll have to worry about separating the root ball out too much because it's not too densely kind of stuck together and the good thing too about this because it is the growth tip or the growing tip rather um, you can kind of sink it down quite a bit into the pot and uh, you don't have to worry about the growth point being covered up because it's going to come out of up here so okay 
Yeah, I think I'm just gonna try and sink this sucker down, see if I can get this aerial route down below. Send the pain below. Oh man, I might need a bigger pot. <clears throat> this one is a bit of a tight squeeze, to be honest. Another aerial route that's come out that I kind of want facing down. Oh, I just snapped the tip off it, bugger. Okay. Yeah. Be more gentle than me, guys. I think I'm a bit, I'm a bit rough on these poor roots at times. All right, I'm gonna try and squeeze this down a little bit. It's a bit of a tight fit. Sorry for getting off camera. I'm just gonna scoop the soil. There we go. Man, the shovel, what a good idea, guys. Wish I thought of this sooner. <laughs> Definitely does make life a little easier, I'll tell you what. Whoever thought of this was a bloody uh, genius. I bet they were Australian. I bet they were Australian. <laughs> Note the sarcasm, <laughs> please. Don't hate me. Okay. Um, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try and find, ah, there's a lot of um, gaps here at the bottom that I really wanna get filled up with perlite or soil. Otherwise they end up well, wow. it's just gonna become really, really, really well draining if there is a lot of air gaps in there. Shake. When in doubt, just shake the shit out of it. What I was gonna say is, what you can do is try and give your saw mix a good shake to get all the thick stuff to the top. Just like that. <laughs> that technique is patented, by the way, guys. And Move the thick stuff out of the way and get some of the lighter, smaller particles and then put them on the top. I quite often do that because when you water the plant in, and I'm using my hands again, you'll find that those little particles actually all go through and help find a lot of the gaps down below if you've put them at the top of the pot. So. Usually if it's just sort of evenly dispersed through the pot, you'll just water it and wash out a lot of it and the stuff at the top will get to the bottom. But if you layer a whole heap of it at the top and then water it in, you'll notice that goes down a bit and sort of sticks there into those gaps. So I usually do that if I wanna try and fill up a bunch of these gaps down below. So yeah, this one, I don't think I need to stake up. It's kind of wedged in there. I don't think it's gonna, it's gonna have any trouble standing up, but, there we go, far out. A bit of a long one, guys. Again, if you guys have any feedback, any tips and tricks, ticks and ticks and tricks, tricks, tips and tricks, tips and tricks, um, then definitely let me know in the comments below. Hopefully I haven't done anything really stupid here. I think everything here should be okay and these plants will survive and yeah. What do you reckon, guys? Which ones should I sell off? Which ones would you keep if you were me? Would you sell the base of the plant or would you save that hoping that those nodes all activate? Or would you sell uh, the base and keep the top for yourself and sell the mid cuttings too? Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. YouTube reckons you're gonna enjoy this video next. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Toodaloo.